Hey folks, welcome back to the next episode in the Star Citizen Weapons video. This is episode four. This is on missiles, torpedoes, rockets, and tachyon cannons. And uh, I actually have some bonus coverage at the end as well. So if you stick around for that, I hope you'll enjoy it. Without further ado, let's roll the intro and get into it. All right, so we are back. Now, I'm going to precursor this video with a, I guess, a little warning that this might get a little long, as do all my videos, but there's a lot of information to cover here. There's quite a few missiles in uh, the Star Citizen universe, and I'm, I'm including torpedoes and rockets in that. Um, and so without further ado, let's let's really hit into this and uh, let's talk about missiles. So. First thing I want to do here is talk about definitions, okay? So I think it's important we define the types of missiles here. Now, I've taken a lot of this off of StarCitizen.tools. Um, missiles, torpedoes. Missiles are self-propelled guided munitions systems that can deliver a, a variety of payloads to a target. Missiles are stored and fired from pylons, which are characterized by the size of the rack and the number and size of the missiles. For example, a bearing MSD-423 is, is a size 4 missile rack which can fire two size 3 missiles. If you are interested about missile racks, uh, please see my episode 3, which I go over missile racks in depth. Excuse me. The two primary characteristics of a missile are the guidance system and its payload. And really, payload doesn't even matter right now. Uh, it's more about the guidance systems. So... Infrared guidance systems or IR. Some people may think it stands for image recognition, like maybe some old Chris Roberts games. It does not. <laughs> there is no real image recognition. That type of missile would be considered cross section. Um, infrared is the same thing as heat seeking in modern day missiles. Uh, infrared missiles track locked on ships by their heat and infrared emissions. An easier lock can be acquired on ships that are running hot by using more energy weapons or less heat efficient components. Infrared guidance can be fooled by flares, uh, which are also called a decoy in the game, and can potentially lock onto an incorrect target with a similar heat signature. Electromagnetic or EM missiles. They track uh, locked on ships by their electromagnetic emissions, which are released by electronic weapons and components. Careful energy management and efficient components can reduce a ship's EM signature to make locks more difficult. EM missiles can be defeated with chaff, or in the game it's called noise, countermeasures. Cross-section missiles. Uh, they lock onto a ship's cross-section and appearance, so that's more image recognition and, and the actual cross-section of your ship. Lock-on time is long compared to IR and EM locking, but more difficult to fool and unlikely to track the wrong target. Although they can be fooled by noise and decoy, it's supposed to be more difficult for cross-section to lose their lock, which is why they have the downside of having a longer lock-on time. Uh, payloads. High explosive payloads, HE. An HE equipped missile detonates directly on the targeting ship, causing severe damage to the ship's shields, hull, and impacted components. This is typically what I would consider uh, a strike type of payload, uh, which I believe is what they call it in game now. The electromagnetic pulse. An EMP missile detonates on or near the targeting ship, causing significant damage to shields and potentially disabling major components of the ship. It really doesn't exist in the game right now. We have EMP devices, but we don't really have EMP missiles. Um, but it is similar to uh, like a proximity missile. A proximity missile would not detonate directly on the hull or, or the ship, but in the neighborhood of the ship to and then have kind of an area of effect uh, which it would damage. Cluster munitions. A CM equipped missile approaches the targeting ship and fires a cluster of sub munitions that weakens the armor or shields, leaving the target vulnerable to the full payload that follows. For example, the Rattler is uh, a missile with like seven smaller missiles inside of it. Um, currently, 
not really functioning in 3.13.1 with the cluster of missiles. So I'm sure there's a ton more missile stuff to come, but right now this is pretty much what we have. So let's talk about missiles. The first missile, we're, we're going to go through infrared missiles first. And the first missile has the... It, the unique distinction of being from the Van Duel clans, and it is called the Arrow 1 Infrared Missile. Commonly known by its military designation, the Arrow is a small infrared strike missile that has become the mainstay of the Van Duel armory. Um, it is a size 1 missile. It does 2,916 damage. Uh, when it hits, it is a strike missile. Uh, it's, it, it, it does use infrared um, in the in uh, Urkel. There, there's issues with Urkel games right now, the DPS calculator, where it's not classifying infrared missiles as infrared, but rather as cross section and cross section missiles are also classified as cross section. But in the game right now, infrared missiles are actually segregated out as infrared. Anyway, the tracking signal uh minimum is 138.3 i'm not quite sure what that's gonna do um i think it's just really how well it tracks it has a very short lock on time of half a second uh it does require you to be 750 meters away from your target to lock this missile size one missiles are all like that they all have the same uh minimum range and that is not the maximum range 10,000 meters it's just what what urkel has it is incorrect um, there is a max range for the missile, um, just because it'll probably run out of gas. Um, the ignite time, uh, basically when it drops, how quick it ignites and goes after the, the target. The speed is important. It's, it's pretty quick at 1500 meters a second. Uh, it tracks about 2000 meters. Uh, so if your target just turns around and speeds away, it's only going to track so far. The explosion radius, 1.8 meters. The maximum explosion radius, 2.8 meters. And the missile itself has 10 hit points. You can buy this missile for a whopping 88 Alpha UBC, either at Grim Hex or Hurston L3. That is a creepy picture of the Van Duel. That's why I put it up there. I kind of like it. Moving on, we have the Marksman 1 infrared missile from Bering. Uh, it is uh, the Bearings Marksman series of proximity missiles has earned as much of a reputation for its ability to track a wide range of heat signatures as it has for its area effect proximity damage. So, again, this is a size one missile damage is twenty five ninety two. It does do uh, uh, it's not a strike missile. It's a proximity missile. So it should blow up near the target. Um, it is. Tracking signal 137, lock time half a second. Again, that, these are all pretty standard for size ones. Uh, minimum range 750, uh, speed 1500, tracking distance 2000 meters, um, explosion radius uh, 1.5 uh, to 2 meters. And uh, you can buy this missile for 73. It's cheap. 73 Alpha UBC at Hurston L2, Her L5, Area 18 Center Mass, New Babbage Center Mass. Okay, next up is the Firestorm Kinetics Ignite 2 Infrared Missile. Now, this missile is very much standard on a lot of ships for infrared. The Ignite is Firestorm's premier brand of heat-seeking strike missile that is the definition of fire and forget. Simply let it fly and enjoy the show. Um, this is a size 2 infrared missile, which is obviously why it's called uh, Ignite 2. Uh, it does 3,694 damage as a strike missile, so it does impact the hull. Tracking signal 87. Lock time is a little bit longer at 0.8 than a size one. Uh, it does require a thousand meters minimum for you to be able to actually lock onto your target. Again, the maximum is incorrect at 10,000. The ignite time is one and a half seconds, basically, and the speed is 1400 meters a second. It should track up to 3000 meters. And the explosion radius is a little bit bigger than the size ones at two meters and 2.75 meters. You can buy this missile at Grim Hex, uh, Her L3, Port Alisar, and Area 18 Dumpers Depot for uh, anywhere from 102 to 126 Alpha UBC. All right, so our next missile here is the Vanduul Bullet 2 Infrared Missile. 
The Vandal Bullet II UBE designation, by the way, is a size 2 infrared missile. Pilots in the Navy have developed a healthy respect for this infrared targeting Vandal strike missile. It's a size 2 missile. It does 3,499 damage. Um, tracking signal 88.4. Lock time is 0.8. Minimum range 1,000 meters. Ignite time, one and a half seconds. Speed, 1,400 meters a second. Tracks out to 3,000 meters. And a bigger explosion radius at three minimum meters minimum to a max of 4.13. You can pick up this missile at Port Olisar, Dumpers Depot, and Hurston L2 for 118 Alpha UEC. Moving on to the next size 2 missile for infrared. This is the Rattler 2. Um, by Nova Pyrotechnica. Um, I'm not sure if I spelled that wrong with a K or it's supposed to be a C. Anyway, uh, the Nova Pyrotechnica Rattler 2 is a size 2 infrared cluster missile. It is a cost-effective cluster missile that will no doubt appeal to a wide variety of pilots. When fired, the Rattler will track the opponent's IR signature and create an opening barrage that weakens the armor or shields, leaving the target vulnerable to the full payload that follows. The Nova Pyrotechnica Venom rocket is a size 1 infrared missile. It is the little tiny cluster missile inside the Rattler 2. You cannot buy the Venom rocket by itself. You just have to buy the uh, the Rattler 2. Now, Games has a huge issue with the damage for this, probably because of all the little Venom rockets inside. And it has its damage at 2 million, which is not true. So... <laughs> Do not take that for a gospel at all. Um, I don't know the true damage of this. And as of thir uh, PAX 3.13, the cluster missiles don't actually fire in a cluster anymore. It's just a missile that actually goes out and hits. I'm hoping in 3.14 with missile operator mode that got fixed. But it used to be you fired this thing and then, you know, seven little missiles came out. And it was super awesome and it was cool to look at. But it does not work in 3.13. So... Uh, it has a tracking of 131, uh, lock time of 0.8, minimum range of 1,000 meters, ignition time 0.86, speed of 1,400 meters a second, tracks after 3,000, exploded resume radius of 12 meters minimum, and then maximum is 3.88. So definitely there are some statistics that are messed up here. Well, you can buy this missile at Area 18 for uh, 82 of UEC or at Hurl 4 and QL 5 for 91. Alpha UEC. Okay, on to size three infrared missiles, the Vandul Chaos 3 infrared missile. The Vandul Chaos 3 is a size three infrared missile. Naval flight instructors often include the heat sinking Chaos Strike missile in Vandal attack simulations, citing that its speed and strength gives new recruits the proper respect for the enemy they will be facing. Uh, you can see this size 3 strike missile does 4,199 damage. Really, we're getting up to some serious damage now. Uh, tracking signal minimum is 74. Lock time is just over a second at 1.2. Still pretty low. Uh, lock range is 1,250 meters minimum. So that's the minimum for any size 3. Uh, the ignition time, one one and a half seconds. Speed, 1,300 meters a second. That's pretty quick. Tracking distance says up to 9,104 meters. Explosion radius is even higher now at 4.5 minimum, 5.5 max. And you can pick this missile up at Area 18, New Babbage, or Hurston L3 for 154 Alpha UVC. The next size 3 missile is the Viper 3 by Nova Pyrotechnica. Uh, the Viper 3 is a size 3 infrared missile. Nova has worked hard to ensure that their infrared tracking Viper Strike missile lives up to its name by delivering agile and lethal attacks against hostile targets. Uh, it does 3,499 damage. It is uh, a strike missile, so it's made to hit the ship. Tracking time, or tra sorry, tracking signals 81.7. Lock time is 1.2 seconds. Minimum range 1,250 meters. Ignition time, one and a half seconds. Speed, 1,300 meters a second. Tracking distance, 7,586 meters. Explosion radius, minimum 4.5, maximum 5.5. And you can pick this up at Crew L5 or Grim Hex for uh, either 142 or 160 Alpha UEC. 
Moving on to the size four is the Van Duel Dragon Four Infrared Missile, and that is not uh, that's not a joke, folks. That this missile is not actually rendered; like it has a model, but it's all gray box stuff. Like there's no design on it, and that's just the way it is right now. The Vandal Dragon 4 is a size 4 infrared missile. It has a fearful reputation earned the number of destroyed naval ships attributed to its destructive power. That's grammar is not correct there. But it is a size 4 infrared. It does 5,039 damage as a strike missile. Uh, the signal minimum for tracking is 58. Lock time 1.7 seconds. The minimum range 1,500 meters. Ignition time, half second. Speed is 1,200. Uh, tracking distance maximum, 16,000 meters now. Uh, explosion radius is higher now. It's 6 meters minimum, 7.88 max. And you can pick this missile up at Her L2 or Her L5 for 200 Alpha UVC. Moving on to the Pathfinder 4 by Bearing Applied Technology. The Pathfinder 4 is a size 4 infrared missile. It has been a consistent member of Bering's already robust arsenal thanks to its tried and tested propulsion system and heat seeking guidance array. It is a proximity missile. Size 4 does 5,879 damage. Uh, tracking signal minimum 57.8. Lock time 1.7 seconds. The minimum range, has, as with all size 4s, is 1,500 meters. Ignition time half a second. Speed 1,200 meters a second. Uh, tracking maximum distance is 14,566 meters. Explosion radius minimum 5.5, maximum 7 meters. You can pick this up at Her L2 for 203 Alpha UVC or at Area 18 or New Bavic Center Mass for 211 Alpha UVC. Okay, now that was the uh, so anything that's a size 5 is considered a torpedo. So now we're moving on into the cross-section missiles. The size one, first one, is the Firestorm Kinetic Spark 1 cross-section missile. Uh, using cross-section targeting, this lightweight proximity missile packs a considerable punch. The Spark 1 does damage of 2,924. Um, fracking signal minim uh, minimum is 138.3, has a half a second lock time. Again, as with all size ones, 750 meter minimum range. Ignition times half second. Speed is 1500 meters a second. That's pretty, pretty fast. Uh, tracking distance maximum is 2000 meters. Explosion radius 1.25 to 1.88 meters. You can pick this missile up at Crew L5 or Her L5 for 75 Alpha UBC or at PO or Grim Hex for 83 Alpha UBC. And a little fun trivia here, the Spark was originally the only dumb fire missile in the game. Since Star Citizen Alpha 2.6.3, it was converted into a cross-section missile as dumb fire mechanics are no longer in the game. Moving on to the Thermite Concern, and one of my favorite missiles, the Strike Force 2 Cross-Section Missile. It is the latest culmination of Thermite Concern's expansion into the missile industry, showcasing notable design and cross-section targeting improvements. It is a size 2 cross-section strike missile, does 3790 damage, tracking signal minimum is 87.9, lock time 0.8 seconds, takes 1000 meters for lock range minimum, ignition time 1.5 seconds, the speed 1400 meters a second, uh, the tracking maximum distance is 3000 meters, explosion radius is 2, minimum, uh, two meters minimum and 2.25 meters maximum. You can pick this missile up at PO for 99 off UVC or at Area 18 or New Babbage for 126 off UVC. Moving on to the Firestorm Kinetics Tempest 2 cross section missile. The Tempest was designed with nothing but annihilation in mind. Using Firestorm Kinetics targeting technology, this proximity missile locks onto a target's cross section to draw conflicts to a sweet, sweet, to a swift conclusion. Uh, maybe it's sweet as well. Uh, it is a size 2 uh, proximity missile. Does 3,509 damage. Tracking signal minimum 87.9. Lock time 0.8. Lock range minimum 1,000 meters. Ignition time 1.54 seconds. Speed 1,400 meters a second. Uh, tracking maximum distance is 3,000. Explosion radius. It says 12 meters minimum. 
and then 3.38 meters maximum. So I'm not, again, that's an error with Urkel. Urkel has a lot of issues with, with uh, missiles and stuff. And I think that's due to, because it pulls data from the game files. Uh, I think that's the issue. And we don't have like hard values. It's, it's pretty much the best guess here. Um, you can pick this missile up at Crew L5 or Her L5 for 97 Alpha UBC or at Grim Hex or Area 18. Uh, Grim Hex is 108 Alpha UBC and Area 18 is 120 Alpha UBC. Moving on to the size three missiles, and probably my favorite size three is the Arrestor 3 cross section missile. Um, yeah, this guy is, it does a lot of damage and it's, it's, it's fairly quick uh, for a cross section lock time. Um, it does 4,211 damage as a proximity missile. Tracking signal minimum 61.9. Lock time is 1.2 seconds. The minimum lock range is 1,250 meters, as with all size threes. Uh, ignite time, one and a half seconds. Speed, 1,300. Tracking distance mac maximum is 9,129 meters. Explosion radius goes from 4 to 4.88 meters. You can pick this missile up at Crew L5 or Hurl 4 for 145 Alpha UC. PO and Grim Hex at 161 Alpha UC or Area 18 or New Babix for 179 Alpha UC. The next missile is by Talon. The Talon Weapon Systems Assailant 4 cross section missile. Um, this Talon Weapon Systems Assailant 4 is a size 4 cross section missile. It is a perfect weapon solution for precision strikes against motivated opponents. Um, it does 5,319 damage as a strike missile. Its tracking uh, signal minimum is 44.3, lock time 1.7, lock range 1,500 meters, ignition time half a second, speed 1,200 meters a second, tracking distance maximum 17,297 meters, and the explosion radius goes from 7.5 minimum to 8.63 meters maximum. You can pick it up at Area 18, New Babbage, or Her L5 for 224 Alpha UBC. Okay, on to the EM missile, size one, the Bearing Applied Technology Pioneer 1 EM missile. The Bearing Pioneer 1 is a size one electromagnetic missile. The updated Oracle EM tracking system has proven itself time and time again in numerous consumer testing reports against similarly class proximity missiles. Now, one thing to keep in mind about EM missiles is they typically do the most damage, but uh, they are fairly easy to fool. Uh, this size one missile does 2,722 damage. Um, tracking signal minimum 138.3, lock time half a second, lock range minimum 750 meters, ignition time half a second, speed 1500 meters a second, tracking distance maximum 2000 meters, explosion radius is 1.25 to 1.75 meters maximum. You can pick this bad boy up at Hurl 5 for 71 Alpha UBC or Airy 18 or New Babbage Center Mass for 74 Alpha UBC. The next EM missile is the Thermite Concern Task Force 1. It is a size 1 electromagnetic missile. It is a lightweight EM tracking strike missile with a top end class propulsion system, provides an efficient mixture of speed and firepower to establish battlefield dominance. And this missile looks awesome. Aesthetically, it's one of my favorite missiles in the game. Um, it does 2,892 damage as a strike missile. Tracking signal minimum 138.3, lock time is 0.5, lock range minimum 750 meters, ignition time half second, speed 1500 meters a second, tracking distance maximum 2000 meters, and the explosion radius is, goes from 0.5 meters to 0.75 meters, so pretty small on that. But it is size 1, you can pick this guy up at Hurl 2 for 59 Alpha UBC, or at Area 18 or New Babbage for 75 Alpha UBC. The next missile is a size 2 by Talon Weapon Systems, the Dominator 2. The Dominator 2 is a size 2 electromagnetic missile. It is a precision ordnance package designed to establish tactical battlefield dominance. It does 3,894 damage, which is a lot for size 2. Uh, signal minimum, it is, by the way, it's a strike missile, so it's designed to hit the ship. Tracking signal minimum 73.2, lock time 0.8, lock range minimum 1,000 meters, uh, as, is, as is size 2's. Ignition time 1.54 seconds, speed 1,400 meters a second. The tracking distance maximum is 3,000 meters, and the explosion radius goes from 3.2 meters to 4.5 meters. 
You can pick this bad boy up at Area 18, New Mavics, or her L3 for 130 FEVC. The next size 3 EM missile is the Thunderbolt 3 by Firestorm Kinetics. It is a size 3 electromagnetic missile. Thanks to the Firestorm Thunderbolt's agile frame and EM targeting system, this proximity missile is a solid choice for a wide variety of combat scenarios. I use this missile a lot personally. Uh, I really like it. Um, it does 4,654 damage, uh, quite a bit more in the EM side. Uh, tracking signal minimum 61.9, lock time 1.2 seconds, lock range minimum 1,250 meters. Ignition time, one and a half seconds. Speed, 1,300 meters a second. The tracking distance maximum is 10,000 meters. Explosion radius goes from 4 to 4.88 meters maximum. You can pick this guy up at Hurrell 2 cheaply for 152 Alpha UEC or uh, 169 Alpha UEC at PO or Grim Hex and at Area 18 to New Mavics for 187 next missile is the Raptor 4 by Talon Weapon Systems. It is a size 4 electromagnetic missile utilizing advanced electromagnetic tracking and balanced precision flight. The Talon Raptor Strike Missile is a fierce addition to any ship's arsenal. Uh, it does 5,879 damage as a strike missile. Tracking signal minimum is 40.9 lock time 1.7 seconds, uh, which I think is lower than the other size 4s. Uh, minimum lock uh, lock range minimum 1500 meters ignition time half second speed 1200 meters a second tracking distance maximum 1000 uh, i'm sorry 19117 meters and the explosion radius goes from 8 to 9 meters maximum the uh you can pick this guy up at her l3 and her l4 for 240 alpha uvc or at area 18 or new mavics for 317 alpha uvc Okay, let's get on to torpedoes. There are three, count them, three size 5 torpedoes. The first one is the Talon Weapon Systems Valkyrie 5 Infrared Torpedo. It features a multi-tiered thrust solution with state-of-the-art infrared tracking capabilities. Now, you'll see the damage here jump way up from size 4s to size 5s. The damage on this guy, even at infrared, is 19,331. It is much bigger than a size four. It is a, that's why it's called a torpedo. It is a strike torpedo as well. Tracking signal minimum is 22. <laughs> lock time, 2.3 seconds. Lock range minimum. Lock range for the size five is 1,750 meters. Ignition time is 0.52 seconds. The speed, 750 meters a second. Pretty slow. Tracking distance maximum is 32,775 meters. The explosion radius is 8 meters minimum, 10.13 meters maximum. You can pick this bad boy up at Area 18, New Babbage, or her L4 for 474 Alpha UVC. Now, the probably my favorite size 5 torpedo is the Stalker 5. Uh, it's cross section with minimal maneuverability but an extremely long range. The Talon Stalker 5 is typical of other Goliath class missiles in that it excels at targeting large, fairly static targets such as cap ships, orbital platforms. Massive in size, the Stalker 5 delivers a devastating payload, providing that slow and steady can definitely win the race. The size 5 strike torpedo does 20,865 damage. Um, tracking signal minimum is 22. Lock time is 2.3 seconds. Remember, the infrared and uh, the EM are supposed to be sh be shorter. This is the cross-section. Um, the lock range minimum is 1750 meters, as is all size fives here. Uh, ignition time, half a second. Speed, 750 meters. Tracking distance max, 31,000 and change. Explosion radius, 8 meters to 10.88 meters max. The, you can buy this at Grim Hex at, for 506 Alpha UEC or at Area 18 or New Babbage for 668 Alpha UEC. And lastly, for the size 5 torpedoes, the EM torpedo, the Reaper 5 by Talon Weapon Systems. Uh, it features a favorable destructive yield to expense ratio, a proven Talon EM, and a proven Talon EM tracker suite. It does 18,798 damage, so less than the cross-section. Um, but it has uh, about a half-second shorter lock time at 2.3 seconds. Uh, tracking signals, 22. Lock range minimum, 1750. Ignition time, 0.5. 
Uh, second speed, 750 meters. Second tracking distance maximum, 34,411 meters. The explosion radius goes from 8 to 10.38 uh, meters maximum. You can pick this up at New Babbage or Area 18 for 467 Alpha UVC. Oh, nope, I lied. There's one more size 5. <laughs> That is the Scimitar 5 by Talon Weapon Systems. It is an EM torpedo. Um, and there's not much description here. It's a devastating size 5 payload. 18,978 damage as a strike a torpedo. Uh, tracking signal is 22. Lock time, 2.3 seconds. Lock range minimum is 50. I think, okay, so I think this one here is designed for the, uh, for vehicles. Which is why the lock range is so short. But I, I think you can put them on ships as well. So I'm not sure how that plays out on ships with, with the lock range minimum. This is just what Urkel is telling me. So on a, on a ship in space, it might well be 1750. But on a vehicle, it might be 50 meters. Uh, ignition time, 0.52 seconds. Speed, 750 meters a second. Tracking distance, 34,512. Explosion radius 8 meters to 10.13 meters max. You can buy it at PO, Area 18, New Babbage, or Her L5 for 468 Alpha UVC. Moving on to the single lone size 7 torpedo, which you can find on the Anvil Ballista. And when you get to it, yeah, I did blow myself up shooting these uh, on flat ground as a test. Uh, they're made to fire at targets in the sky and not... Uh, uh, like a turret that's that's way over there. Maybe I could have raised them up and they, because when they come off, they kind of fall and then they go. But yeah, I ended up blowing my ballista up by shooting this. So um, carrying a sizable payload and an advanced heat seeking sensor, the uh, Hellion missile from Talon can be effective against aggressors of all sizes. Look at this. This size seven torpedo does 104,203 damage. That is massive. Uh, the ballista, if you can dodge the size 7, good for you, because this this thing, if it hits, it's probably going to kill most smaller ships. Uh, the tracking signal minimum is 11. Again, not sure necessarily what that means. Uh, I think higher is better. Uh, lock time, 3.5 seconds. Uh, so that is quite a long time to lock. Um, lock range minimum, 50 meters. Again, this, this thing is supposed to go on a ballista, so I think that's why the lock range minimum is so low. Ignite time is 0.52 seconds, speed 1,000 meters a second, tracking distance 49,689 meters, explosion radius goes from 12 to 15.75 meters. You can buy this guy at Area 18, Dumbers Depot, or at Center Mass in Area 18, Area 18 or at Center Mass in New Babbage, all for 927 Alpha UBC. It also comes stock on the Anvil Ballista. Moving on to the big daddies, the three size nine torpedoes. First one up is the Talon Weapon Systems Typhoon 9 infrared torpedo. It delivers a heavy payload sure to serve as a deterrent from any further hostile actions. This guy is a size nine. Damage is 433,353 damage. I mean, compared to the size seven, this is four times the yield, and it's only two sizes bigger. So massive, massive payloads on these size nines. Uh, tracking signal minimum is 11. Lock time is five. Lock range minimum is 2,600 meters for minimum lock range. So definitely made for bigger targets. The ignition time is 0.52 seconds. The speed is 968 meters a second. The tracking distance is 49,689 meters. Explosion radius is 12 meters to 15.75 meters. And you can, these are expensive missiles, so you can pick them up Area 18 or PO for 3,670 Alpha UVC or at Area 18 or New Babbage for 4,842. So there you go. The next size nine is the Argos 9 by Talon Weapon Systems. It is the cross-section version of the torpedo. It is a strike torpedo featuring a classic straightforward design that relies on exacting manufacturing standards and a classic cross-section targeting system. It does 4,000, oh, sorry, 421,686 damage, massive damage. Tracking signal 11.2, lock time 12.22 seconds. That is a long time to be locking on something. 
Lock range minimums 1,000 meters. Ignition time 0.52. Speed 450. Tracking distance maximum 30. 1,134 meters. Explosion radius goes from 12 to 15, uh, 12 meters to 15.13 meters. You can pick it up a Hurl 2 for 3,500 at 71 Alpha UVC or an Area 18 or uh, New Babbage for 4,711 Alpha UVC. And the last size 9 torpedo, the Seeker 9 EM torpedo by Talon Weapon Systems. Um, it is a precision EM targeting torpedo capable of delivering a massive payload quickly and accurately. A strike torpedo, it does 455,243 damage to its target. Tracking signal minimum 11.2, lock time 5 seconds, lock range minimum 2,600 meters. Ignition time of half second, speed 525 meters a second, very slow. Tracking distance maximum 49,689 meters. Explosion radius is 12 meters. Explosion radius maximum is 15.13 meters. You can pick this guy up at Area 18, either Dumper Depot or Center Mass, or at New Babbage Center Mass for 3,851 Alpha UVC. Something to think about with these torpedoes, there's only two ships that can carry them and fire them. That is the Aegis Eclipse and the Aegis Retaliator. So just keep that in mind. The Eclipse can hold three of them, and I believe the Retaliator can hold six of them. So there you go. Okay, time to move into Rockets. The most underwhelming uh, ordnance in the game. So, rockets in Star Citizen. Um, the Jericho XL by Hurston Dynamics is a swappable rocket pod uh, for missiles. You can swap it out for missiles. Found on the Aegis Vanguard Harbinger or the Consolidated Allen Mustang Delta ships. It is not purchasable in game and comes with these ships. Uh, it's mounted on a size 3 hardpoint. Now, there are a bunch of rocket pod data files in the game, but there's only two ships that have rocket pods attached, and that is the, the Vanguard Harbinger or the uh, Mustang Delta. And they come with this stock. Um, now, it's just interesting to note that the size 3 rocket pods on the Jericho XL uh, contain 18 size 1 rockets each. So that's... It's pretty good. Rockets are dumb fire. You just you shoot them and they go in a straight line until they hit something and blow up. Um, they're not massive damage. If you look, we look at the size. The XL is a size three rocket pod, two hundred fifty one DPS, two hundred fifty one alpha damage. Um, fire rate is sixty RPM. Not that that matters. Explosion radius five meters. Uh, the range 2,500 meters, uh, speed 900 meters a second. The ammo count, uh, 36 uh, pellets per shot is one. It's just one little rocket per shot. Um, they do put 7.28 to EM, um, but they don't do almost anything to IR. IR is 0.4. Um, they do do some distortion damage. I, I don't know. I don't know what all that stuff means, and I'm not worried about it, but... This is what I know. They used to animate in-game. You used to hit the rocket button when you fired a rocket, and you saw a little rocket fire out. But in 3.13, that doesn't happen anymore. It's an invisible little rocket. So when you shoot it, you can see that your target's taking damage if you hit it, but you can't see if you hit it. You can't even see the little rocket come out. I have not gotten it to work in 3.13. So while they do work, uh, th there's really no point to this thing. They, they come on two ships. You can't buy them. So, you know, they just kind of, they are what they are. Um, to be honest, I would probably swap them out for missiles because right now there just really is no real rocket gameplay. Okay. Um, other rocket pods, like I said, other rocket pods do exist in the game but are not currently purchasable or usable in game. These are the Jericho size one, the Jericho X size two, and the aforementioned Jericho XL. There are also the Liberator size one, Liberator Prime size two, and Liberator Ultra size three by Thermite Concern. And there's the third manufacturer of rockets being Firestorm Kinetics, who makes the Ibira one, Ibira two, and Ibira three. The difference in rocket pod sizes are depending on the hardpoint size. A size 1 rocket pod contains 6 size 1 rockets. A size 2 pod carries 12 size 1 rockets. And a size 3 pod carries 18 size 1 rockets. Apart from the Vanguard Harbinger and the Mustang Delta, no other current ships or vehicles contain rocket pods. That's all I got to say about that. Moving on to the Tachyon Cannons. Oh, 
believe they existed. Um, so <laughs> I like the picture of the Banu up there. The Banu Singe Cannon Size 2 Tachyon Cannon. Uh, it is a part of the Sing series Tachyon Cannon. It is a long-range, high-damage cannon, like much of the Banu technology. Its real origin is unknown, but based on the fact that it differs from other Banu engineering choices, the UE historians suspect they assimilated it from some other culture. It is a size 2 uh, weapon, a DPS 270, Alpha 180, fire rate of 90 rounds per minute, uh, the range is 2,970 meters, speed of 2,200 meters a second. Well, it's still fast. It's not as fast as it should be. Um, and then there's all the other stats over there. Not a whole lot to EM uh, at 2.6. Uh, quite a bit to ER at 3.9. They do get hot. Hey, here's the deal. The Tachyon Cannons, or as another streamer likes to call them, Jesus Beams. Um, when they first came out with the Banu Defender, and they're only on the Banu Defender, they basically had such a high rate of speed. As soon as you press the button, if you were on target, they would hit. And they were that fast. Now, they did have a range, but they were so fast that the speed of the of the projectile coming out could not be avoided. And it's, it's almost a beam weapon. But as such, um, I think it was a little bit overpowered. And I think that was in 3.2. 10 as well it might have been 3.9 but i think it was in 3.10 and it was a really cool weapon and a really cool ship and that was the only time i ever flew the uh the defender the manu defender because i think in the next patch in 3.11 it got nerfed and it, they they stuck gimbaled size 2 singe cannons on there and they, they're just not the same. They don't fire the same. They don't look the same. They don't work the same. And I think CAG said, we're going to work on these. And uh, yeah, it's been almost a year. And we have not seen nor heard of anything about the what's supposed to be the Tachyon Cannons. <clears throat> I didn't even bother putting a, a video up there. It's just coming soon, TM, as with everything else at CAG. Hey, it's bonus covers time. Let's talk about EMP devices in the bonus coverage. Okay, the first EMP device, the Macox Tromag EMP Size 1 Burst Generator. The Tromag from Maxox is a well-designed and reliable EMP-focused burst generator. Its popularity has risen over the years as pilots look for the alternative to Bearings Rep 8. The Tromag boasts a faster charge time, uh, than their main competitor, but has a smaller effective radius, leaving pilots to decide whether they prefer speed or size. This uh, EMP can be found exclusively on the Tumbrel Cyclone Anti-Air. Um, it is a size one EMP generator, does a thousand damage, I guess, to the shields or systems. Its minimum radius is 150 meters. Its maximum radius 400 meters. Charge time is 12 seconds for full charge. Unleash time is one second. Cooldown time is six seconds. The power to EM is two. Uh, decay rate, uh, our temperature to IR is six. That's pretty high. Uh, the distortion max damage is a thousand. Um, the other time, uh, EMPs don't really shut down ships anymore. So I won't get into the other times. But here's the thing. You need to be uh, at least 150 meters away from your target for it to actually affect it, because that's the minimum radius. Um, if you are further than 400 meters from your target, uh, it also will not affect them, because that is the maximum radius. So that's pretty much what you got to think of with EMs. So if you're approaching a ship or another vehicle with your EM, one, realize it takes 12 seconds to charge, one second to unleash once you do hit it. And you have to be somewhere within 150 to 400 meters for it to be effective. That's all EMPs. Speaking of EMPs, let's go on to the size two Tromag burst generator from Max Ox is a well-designed and reliable EMP focused. Yeah, I think we already talked about that. Um, I'm not going to read the description again. You can find this generator on the Aegis Saber Raven and the Anvil Hawk. And the Aegis Saber Raven has two of them by the way, giving you a double dose instead of the Hawk, just giving you one dose. So take everything I say and double it for the Raven. Uh, damage 1800. That would be for the Hawk. 
Um, it would be what 3600 for the Raven. The minimum radius is 250, maximum radius 750. So keep that in mind. You have to be within that uh, that 500 meter bubble. Charge time 12 seconds. Unleash time one second. Cooldown time 12 seconds. So it does not do a lot to EM, but it does add six to the IR, which is quite a bit. And it does, uh, yeah, it does some pretty good damage for for size two if you really want to take down some shields and stuff or be like a support aircraft. The next EMP is on the Aegis Avenger Warlock. It is the Bearing Rep 8 Size 4 EMP generator. The highly regarded EMP focused burst generator from Bearing. It balances manageable charge time with a strong blast of distortion damage that knocks out electronic components caught within its radius. Solid engineering and centuries of use have made this standard non lethal deterrent across the Empire. It is a size 4 generator. Damage is 3,800. So it does more than the size 2 uh, with like the Saber Raven in one shot. Uh, but it does take up the entire cargo area of the Warlock. So trade-offs. The minimum radius is 400 meters. The maximum radius is 1,200 meters. The charge time is 12 seconds. Unleash time is 2 seconds. So keep that in mind. It does take 2 seconds to fully go off. The cooldown time is 25 seconds. So double the charge time. Um, power to EM is two, temperature IR is six, so that's about the same. Pretty powerful little EMP generator. If you like that type of gameplay, and let's talk about the next one, probably the best EMP generator in the game, the Rep VS size four EMP generator. Deliver distortion damage with a Rep VS burst generator. Built specifically for the Aegis Vanguard Sentinel, Bering modified the technology used in the reputable Rep-8 to design an effective, non-lethal weapon that integrates seamlessly with the Sentinel. And the Sentinel is obviously known for its EMP. Uh, and it is it, this generator can only be found on the Aegis Vanguard Sentinel. It does 6,000 distortion damage to shields and systems. That is a lot. Uh, almost double what the Warlock would do with its Rep-8. Um, the minimum radius is 600 meters. So you do need to be a fairly good distance away, but the maximum is 2,200 meters. It'll still do damage 2,200 meters away. Charge time. It does take 20 full seconds to charge, two seconds to unleash, and cooldown time is 40 seconds. So it's a long time between the bursts. Again, the power to EM is two, temperature to IR is six, so much higher on the IR side. And there you go, EMP generators. If you like that type of gameplay, it's pretty fun, but uh, it did get nerfed, I believe, in 311. Um, EMPs used to actually shut down your ship, which is what they're supposed to do. Um, but it would, com I mean, it would almost bypass shields and then shut down your ship. So if you got hit by a blast with a Sentinel, you were in a smaller ship, even like a Hornet or something. Boom, your ship shut down. And it would take time for it to restart, which is why back then people used military components almost exclusively because they had the shortest time to boot up after it received a, an EMP blast. That has since been nerfed. EMP does currently does a bunch of damage to shields, and I think on larger ships it might disable systems. But on smaller ships it will not. Uh, maybe once everything is physicalized, EMP will actually matter again. But there's only so many ships that use them. So... Uh, the ways to defend against EMP is either be real close or real far away. Let them do their burst, and then you have forty. You know, four. Uh, you have sixty seconds to come in because uh, it takes forty seconds to cool down, twenty seconds to charge, and then you got a full minute. You can come in and, and barrage the uh, the Vanguard Sentinel. So strategies abound. All right, let's talk about our takeaways as we wrap up the video on missiles, rockets, tachyon cannons, and EMP devices. So, uh, missiles, here we go. Uh, basically, use what type of missile you like. There is no necessary strategy on whether you want a cross-section or an infrared or a, a EM missile. I mean, they're all able to be fooled. Um, cross-sections are supposed to be fooled the least, although that has not been my... Uh, observation and at least in 3.13 maybe next packs 3.14 with missile operator mode that'll be that'll be different but uh most important missiles have a lot of work left aesthetics may matter maybe you like a pretty missile uh, missiles are good to either soften up shields in preparations for a gun attack 
or to finish a target off. So you've done a lot of work with guns. They're, they're overheated. You switch to missiles, you finish them off. Um, keep in mind, they do require range. You have to be pretty far back for some of those missiles. And in 3.14, uh, we are switching to missile operator mode, which you will not be able to use missiles and guns at the same time. So without further ado, size one, the best damage on size one missiles are is the Spark 1, the Arrow 1, and the Task Force 1. <laughs> They're in that order. The Spark 1 does the most, then the Arrow 1, then the Task Force 1. Um, as far as like the best energy damage and physical damage, they're all pretty much the same because they're size one. For size two, the best damage is the Dominator 2, followed by the Strike Force 2 and the Ignite 2. Um, the best energy damage is of still the Dominator 2 and the Strike Force 2, they're tied. And the best physical damage is the Ignite 2, and the best tracking missile is the Bullet 2. So, interesting. Size 3, the best damage is the Thunderbolt 3 cross-section, then the Arrestor 3, and then the Chaos 3. The best energy, energy damage is the Thunderbolt 3, the best physical damage is the Thunderbolt 3, and the best tracking is the Viper 3, which does the least amount of damage. So I think overall, you know, well, we'll, we'll do overalls here at the end. Uh, size 4, the best damage is the Raptor 4 EM and the Pathfinder 4 CS, they are tied. And then and then the Asylum 4. The best energy damage for size 4 is the Raptor 4 and the Pathfinder 4, they're the same. Best physical damage of the Raptor 4 and the Pathfinder 4, they're the same. And the best tracking is the Dragon 4. Size 5, the best damage is the Stalker 5. Then the Valkyrie 5, then the Scimitar 5. The best energy damage is the Stalker 5. The best physical damage is the Reaper 5, surprise. And the um, the Scimitar 5 is really for, for vehicles. Um, size 7 we skipped because there's only one missile, so it is what it is. Uh, size 9, the best damage is the Seeker 9, then the Typhoon 9, and then the Argus. I'm sorry, the Argos 9. The best energy damage is the Seeker 9. Best physical damage is the Seeker 9. And the Argos 9 has the longest lock time at 12.2 seconds. So keep in mind the IR and EMs can be the easiest to evade, but cross-section is the hardest to countermeasure. So as far as the best missiles, in my opinion, um, for size 1, it's any of them. For size 2, it's going to be the Dominator 2 um, or the Strike Force 2. Uh, the best one for size 3 is going to be the Thunderbolt 3. The best one for size 4 is either the Raptor 4 or the Pathfinder 4, either one. Size 5, it's going to either be this, it's going to be the Stalker 5. Uh, the best uh, size 9 is, for me, is going to be the Seeker 9. So, rockets, they are bespoke to Mustang Delta and Vanguard Harbinger. Not very powerful, but they are a concept in progress. Tachyon cannons. When in the game, it was a monster killer. It's been nine months, and we're still waiting on CIG to give us any word about this weapon. EMP devices. Only four ships and one vehicle have these weapons, so keep that in mind. You have to have the right ship. They are good at whittling down shields, but they don't really affect or shut down systems anymore. Nerfed in 310. Fun mechanic to use. Will it work when components are physicalized? Who knows? Computers? Thrusters? I don't know. And that is about it, folks, for the episode four, the weapons video on missiles, rockets, tachyon cannons, and EMP devices. If you haven't already, please consider, uh, if I have earned it, hitting that little red subscribe button down on the bottom. It is free for you, but it does so much for us, uh, Jawa and myself. You know, this video is very fun to make, but I mean, I'm up against 15 hours making this one video, capturing all the footage you saw in there and getting this PowerPoint up and all that. So that's probably why you really only see this video, like uh, these type of videos only once a month. Um, we do have a Patreon page, guys, if you are interested in supporting the channel, um, along with uh, Patreon uh, we do. We just created a Patreon uh, category in our Discord, which only Patreon members can see, and it gives uh, chat rooms and exclusive content a schedule for our projects. 
first looks uh, exclusive stuff here. Um, we will do Patreon only streams. Uh, we have a Patreon only com section. And um, so if you're interested in getting more from us, we are going to start doing more Patreon stuff and I hope to get more patrons, uh, patrons, I should say. And uh, because it's probably still going to be a while before we see any type of partnership from YouTube. Um, so I want to say thank you guys so much for watching the video. I've had a great time and I hope you've had a good time and learned something. Please feel free to comment below. Joe and I love to talk to you guys about all this different stuff. And, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not the end all know all here. I just based on my a little over a year experience in the game. Um, from what I've seen, I've tried out every one of these weapons. I've have most of the ships in the game. And so I think I have a pretty good, uh, experience with the game even though i'm not you know in the know with cig i think i could provide some pretty good feedback so uh give me a shot let me know what you think and thank you for watching and with that good night stanley